good people. It's your girl, Fedrika McClary Easley, back with another episode of ba, 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 ba. The People Are Blunt. Um, Y'all, it's Pride Month, so I have some of my faves on with me, um, Jake and Tony from Maison Bloom. But before I let them introduce themselves to the people, you know I got to do some housekeeping. So first and foremost, the merch. Good people. Go on over to thepeoplesecosystem.com. Check out our, if you're in Cali, you can actually check out our Smoke This line. Y'all know we still dealing with uh, with federal prohibition, but if you in Cali, you can check that out. Otherwise, our wellness line is up and running. Just added gummies to it. Um, so holler at all of that. And last but not least, we are on everything. We are on YouTube, Apple Music, Spotify, Amazon Prime Music, all the good shit. We need you to like, subscribe, follow, um, thumbs up, do the things that lets us know that you are out there, you are paying attention. Um, and so we can keep this party going. And so now that the housekeeping is out the way, without further ado, I am here today with Jake and Tony from Mason Bloom. Say hey to the people, y'all. Hey, hey, people. Hello, hello. Yes. Okay. So um, I'm super excited to have y'all on. Um, we talked a couple months ago, um, and I was just like, yo, I love what y'all are doing. Your presence is so phenomenal. Uh, but we wanted to, you know, timing is everything in, in this industry. And so um, this is a month of celebration. This is a month of individuality. This is a month of... Um, just, you know, just honoring and recognizing. And so I wanted to have you all on to represent Mason Bloom for Pride Month. So thank you for uh, being willing to come on the show. Well, thank, thank you for, for having, having us. We are so lucky to be here with you today. I feel like I'm the lucky one. I feel like I'm the lucky one. Um, but, and, and look at that background. Look at that background, Jake. We're going to show, we're going to show a little bit of it um, as well. But for those who may not be aware, familiar with Maison Bloom, with this brand, with this movement, we're not just a brand, but it's a movement you all have going on. So um, someone kick us off and tell us about the amazing brand Maison Bloom. Well, really, Maison Bloom is just an opportunity for us to get Tony out there in the world and let people talk to him. Um, and really, if you just do that, then we're doing the world a huge favor. Um, but we also happen to be experts in the beverage space. And Maison Bloom really specializes in cannabis beverage. Um, functional beverage is what we really see it as that elevates the everyday through our perfectly dosed premium uh, in ingredients that, that blend and, and take the best of the cannabis plant itself as an essential herb and ingredient and incorporate that into what is our final product. So we stand out, I think, as a, a different offering from what you may see in the world is that um, the cannabis is really at the heart. The, the power of the flower is the heart of our beverage. And we build out from there to create really uh, amazing alcohol alternatives um, and our goal is really to meet the very thirsty consumer that is uh in this cali sober moment and beyond um, and give the world better for you beverages um that make things like recovery and hangovers something of the past um and you know i don't know about you but i uh i, I kind of got more uh yesterdays than i do tomorrow's in front of me which means Listen, the hangovers, I don't bounce back nearly as quickly. I'm not Tony. Um, let me put it that way. Um, and so, you know, these types of opportunities to create really delicious, really flavor forward, craveable beverages that take full advantage of the plant um, are what really gets us excited. And specifically to be cannabis's first strain specific whole plant single barrel beverage is something we take great pride in because. It's, you know, pardon the pun of Pride Month, but it's taken us two years to get here. So it's a celebration of individuality this month. It's also a celebration of bringing this to life, both through science and through hard work. Um, so first of all, let me just say, 
Um, then I love the fact that you all deal with cannabis as an ingredient and that it is not trying to mask, but trying to elevate. Um, you know, in doing my homework, I listened to an interview and you all were talking about, you know, kind of bringing the cocktail experience into um, the cannabis space, which just was like so near and dear to my heart because like I pride myself on being a woman who enjoys a really great craft cocktail. But after hitting 30, it was like, um, yeah. this is different now. You know what I mean? Like my tolerance is still good. My tolerance, you know, is not what it used to be, but it's still decent, but it's the morning after. Right. Oh, yeah. And that's different. So, um, Tony, real yes. quick, I want to throw it to you because you are, um, you know, you're, you're the man behind the magic in terms of speaking to the people in terms of articulating all of the things that Jake just said to the people. So, with this space in cannabis being limited with marketing, like how do you do what you do? Well, you know, we have about 250 correspondents that we work with and they kind of tell us really where we want, they want to be like met. So everything that you see from our form factor or marketing that you see behind Jake is really kind of led us to where we are today. Um, so everything that we've done so far that you see is kind of led by the people who want to be met in the market. Um, for me, I, you know, I'm new to cannabis and I'm not a smoker and having a beverage is something that I was really intrigued in because I just don't like to smoke and I don't smoke. And our microdosing that we have that's in front of you is only three milligrams of CBD, uh, THC and some seven milligrams of CBD. It's okay, gives you so nice balance and great balance. It looks like you're just having a little cocktail. You feel great. It does knock off your feet. So like the next morning, you're ready up, ready to go. And you, you know, you're just energized. So this is something that I definitely believe in. And everyone that we talk to and have tasted the beverage are in the same boat. And they're like, where can we get this? We want it now. So also, we're also flavor first. And our beverages, you have to have to taste it to believe I, it. Look, I'm waiting. Okay. I'm waiting. <laughs> okay. I'm like, we're gonna send you some. I'm, I am like, yo, I listen, I mean, just just the just the marketing, just the like the packaging that I that I can see on Instagram and on the website alone. I mean, just this background that Jake has as his wall. Um is so intriguing and it puts me back in the mind of um prior to this pandemic when like folks were really going out folks were getting yes. dressed like it was a whole vibe um and you weren't as i guess kind of nervous about just being in each other's spaces yeah. like that's what i think of when i think when i see your marketing exactly i mean we really want to pull in like how to really bring family and friends together and really promote that kind of social, um, you know, tasting and promoting that kind of connection. So let me ask you a question, Tony, because, you know, you said you are new to cannabis. Mm -hmm. um, you're not a smoker. No. Nope. And so, you know, who did this? Like who convinced you to even be open to cannabis, to giving cannabis a try. Was it Jake as he sip his tea? Is that <laughs> you, Jake? Is, is actually, yes, Jake, because Jake is definitely a more consumer than I am, for sure. And then also Nate um, as okay. well, who is our-, an, our third our partner. partner. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Frederica, what you've picked up on is that I am the original gateway drug. <laughs> Like, just, it, it just, it, I mean, I'm a traveling pharmacy at this point. <laughs> For I me, mean, he is. Here's the thing. We all have one. We all have that person nope. in our lives that's like, look, boo. Okay. <laughs> Let me put you on. Let me like, put you on. me up, please. In fairness, I have started carrying a crossbody bag specifically <laughs> because it's the perfect size for all of your pharmaceutical needs, for anyone who you might you might run into. 
Yeah. I may not want a blunt, but Frederica may want a blunt. And so I'm going to keep one in here just in case, right? Tony yeah. might like an edible. See, yeah. almost everything can fit in the crossbody bag. Yeah. Listen, it's sharing is caring. And the and the one thing about the cannabis space is that it is communal. It is about people um socializing with each other. It is about people caring for each other. It's about people like hooking each other up. So yeah. that is right in law lo- in line with keeping with the culture. So shout out to you. <laughs> and let's be fair, Tony likes to be hooked up. Okay. Like he's like. Right there, first in line. Let's do this. <laughs> Look, Tony looks like he's about getting the party started. Like, once I'm, Tony is there. I'm ready. I'm always ready. But, you know, I, I stay ready. So what, you let me know. You let he me know where really, you're at. If you really stay ready, that. you don't have to get ready. Yes. I got you. I got he you. really does. Like, <laughs> that's not an exaggeration. So, Okay. So y'all are cracking me up. Um, y'all are friends. Y'all work mm-hmm. together. The yeah, third part is Nate. Hey, Nate, how are you? Um, how do y'all make that work? Because look, let me just be honest here. Let me be blunt on the people who are blunt. Sometimes you can't mix friendship and business. Um, and you all seem to be more like family than just friends, right? We know that sometimes family are those who you choose, not just blood. So how do y'all make this work? Like how, what brought y'all to Mason Bloom? What brought y'all to like birthing this idea and how do y'all make it work? I mean, we have been together for a while in various different ways. Um, And I think with like any team, right? If, and let's use a sports metaphor here because it's pride, it's pride month and let's get deep in the hetero space. Uh, You know, but when, you know, when you're a sports team, the more you play together, Mm -hmm. theoretically, right? The tighter your plays get, the better you get on building off of each other. And Mm -hmm. so the polite and polished answer here is that this is just not our first rodeo, right? We started together in the fashion space. Who um, was making the suits? Was that Tony? That, no, that was Jake. you? That was Jake I, that was making the yep. suit. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm the classically cl- trained tailor. And then uh, in hard tailoring, a, a weird and random thing, particularly in Western society. And then Tony is the fabulous uh, women's wear designer, although he can do men's wear. Mm-hmm. Uh, he just mm-hmm. he prefers women's wear. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah, see, I was doing my homework. I was like, who up here making these suits and stuff? Okay, continue. <laughs> so, you know, we we spent, uh, you know, a good set of time together in the fashion space. And um, and then from there, Tony and I bounced over into hospitality. Um, I pulled Tony to work with me uh, with Chef Michael Nina's Empire. Um, and Tony was truly my right hand. And we were brought in to take a, a great family of brands and uh, and supercharge them for a younger audience, for more of a millennial set. Um, and it was really an easy jump for us, bringing over our expertise from high fashion um, and, and really a consumer first approach when, when you're dealing with luxury and when you're dealing with custom and yeah. then putting that into a hospitality world of food and beverage. Um, yeah. And, you know, so we, we, trial by fire, we did fashion, then we decided to do restaurants and we thought, you know, we've taken the easy route out. Maybe we should go ahead and throw cannabis in there too. I mean, why not? <laughs> why not? You know, I'll let Tony answer the ins and outs of how we balance it. But, you know, I would simply say that, um, you know, we've gone through these different environments together and through that we forged incredible trust yeah. um, and that trust is is second to none. I mean, you can't put a price tag on it, but that trust is is built in as much of the fact that we're there for each other as the incredible, unique talents that each of us have. Tony has abilities that I don't have. I'm not sure yet what abilities I have that Tony doesn't have. I'll get back to you on that. Um, but yeah, well, nonetheless, we, we complement each other. And that that ability to complement as we've gotten older, at least for me, is 
is really wonderful because it takes away some elements of competition um, and a real understanding that like when we're together, we're just better, right? We're like Voltron that way. And so I can just not do the stuff that I'm not particularly good at. Tony is better at like, it's just, you know, Tony, go here, run this play. Right. And vice versa. Tony can say, this is, this is where I need you to step in Jake. And as we complement each other, we, we get to do the best parts of the job, um, any job that, that we love. And we get to support each other on the things that, that any one of us is better at. And then hopefully at the end of the day, we create just a better badass product. And again, I bring up this consistent statement that I'm getting a little old here, probably because it's my birthday week, but like an age is, is, is weighing on me right now. But honestly, like, you know, when you get to a certain age, you only want to do things that are, that are great. You only want to do good work. You only want to work with good people. And Tony's really good. Nate's really good. So when I found a good thing, yeah. at least for me, I mean, yes, I keep shopping around to add others to the mix, but I'm not going to get rid of the two sure things. So that's at least the way I look at it. But, you know, I, I would I would let Tony tell you the real truth. No, no. I mean, Jake, you have definitely hit on all the points because we are so different. Like Nate is like the mind behind finance. Jake is like the creative. And I'm just kind of like the glue between the two. And, you know, whatever they kind of, throw at me, I can take it and create something out of it. So I think just the way we kind of work together is just very, I mean, we're kind of seamless. Like if you see us, if Nate, if Nate was here, we could just bounce things off each other so easily. And that's how we kind of are together every time. And we, you know, the thing is, we also like to have fun. Um, and, you know, without that, with a smile on our face and not laughing every day and not having some sort of a joke, then it's, it's not worth it. So yeah. we, we, we're all kind of all connected that way. So Tony, first of all, I think that that's beautiful. I'm sorry, go ahead, Jake, what you say, babe? I, I just wanted to clarify, if Tony is going to compare himself to glue, he is at least <laughs> gorilla glue. Like, I was like, <laughs> like, I mean, like he is top shelf glue. <laughs> Okay, this is not something you're just going to get at the CVS or the Walgreens, all right? Like, this, this is at this level. Is yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, you glue something with that, it's there for life. <laughs> listen, listen, um, we we keep Gorilla Glue in the house, especially with the 20-month-old, because oh. something is always getting broken. Something is always happening, and you need to just kind of meld those pieces together. And I'm telling you, once it's stuck, it's stuck. Like the yep. kids say, if it's up and it's stuck, then it's, that's yep. what Gorilla Glue is. It is stuck, okay? <laughs> but but I, I love the way that y'all talk about it, right? Like that's the secret sauce. The sauce is, and I, I like to say, um, not older, but seasoned. Like you think about a good cast iron skillet, right? Yeah. Uh, the older it is, that means the more flavor, right? Like the more love that's ingrained in those pores. You know what I mean? So I like to say that, that we are seasoned, okay? But as you do age and mature, you do get settled in like, this is who I am. It's yep. less of the comparing. It's less of the competition. It's like, I'm going to focus on my strengths. Yeah, I'm always open to learning new things, but this is what I know. Like, this is my lane. And I'm going to ride the fuck out of my lane and mm -hmm. you ride yours. And together, like, this is, this is beautiful. This is symmetry here. Like everything is going to be great. So mm -hmm. I love the way that y'all laid that out. Thank you. I mean, yeah. it's, listen, it's a pleasure to come to work every day with these, with this team. And, and I think Frederica, you feel this too, though. You work with such an amazing team. I mean, I, I have the luxury of crossing over with Melanie in some of our work. So, so we're, we're sort of like team adjacent sometimes, mm -hmm. uh, but like, I mean, it, it matters, right. You know, yes. to get up and be able to go and work in the industry we do is a pleasure, but it's also a battle. You know, yeah. this is not an easy industry, right? No, and no. so to be, you know, to be allied with people who are supportive, people who care about you holistically, right? Care about your place and your voice. It, it's absolutely essential, right? Um, you know, because it makes the hard work easier. 
Um, and if we're going to have to do the hard work, we need to make sure that we make the rest of it as easy as possible. Right, right. And I, and I also just want to highlight um, and just acknowledge your um, intentionality with doing the hard work and with doing better. And I know that that's kind of like one of y'all tags, like if better is, if better is possible, then y'all are going to do it, right? right. Like y'all are reaching for that. Right. Um, but it's very important, especially in this industry that is um, in some ways being taken over, in some ways being manipulated, in some ways being, um, there's an influx of people who do not respect the plant itself but are looking at the industry like kind of solely for making money um mm -hmm. it's important to have companies like maison bloom that really are um acknowledging the harm doing the work of um, internally trying to repair and or prevent from you know things of that nature happening again and just trying to be better like just holistically bringing your full selves to the table um, and that's not always easy to do. And I love that you all are front and um, and forward with your commitment to doing what's right and to doing better. Well, I mean, you know, I, I'd have to volley this one to Tony and, and, and just take the praise. So thank you, Frederica. I mean, listen, if you're doling out praise, like we'll take it. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, it, it, it's really been organic, I think, for us. I, I don't think we, we should definitely, like, uh, arrive at any hero status for, for us or Maison Bloom. You know, what our, our commitment is, is sincere. You know, we're learning every day. This industry, you know, as a legal opportunity is one that is still very young. Um, many of the experiences that we have are, are brand spanking new. Right. Um, and even and as new uh, new states come online, even though other states have been there before, each state operates just a little bit differently. Right. Yeah. So yeah. there's nuance. And and, you know, Tony has been such a leader in our team of our human centered design feedback loop. You know, he he undersold it earlier. But I mean, just the fact I that get in the loop, like I don't understand oh. why I am not a part of the feedback loop. We can change that. We like, can change that. Easy. And, and, and honestly, Frederica, it's as easy as that. You just told us you want to be a part of the loop. Now you're part of the loop. So be, be ready for your at-home dosing kits, your, <laughs> your, your socially distant lemonade stands, your, your paint by numbers coloring books where you're like, what are we actually doing here? Um, and, and that's really, you know, th that, but that does get back to the aspect of our commitment to to if better exists, we're going to go with better. The aspect of education, the aspect of information and knowledge sharing has really come from the fact that we saw consumers consistently citing that as we gave them information, that they were thanking us for that information. Yeah. Thank you for making yeah. that bite size. Thank you for answering my small question, right? You know, one of the key things that Tony advocated for that has made such a difference in the way that we we activate um, and we create experiences in person is the very first thing when you go through a tasting flight. And we can be in a, a critical mass event where there are hundreds of people and it is rapid fire. But the number one thing that we cover first and foremost is we explain to you how much THC you're mm -hmm. consuming if you go through the tasting. Mm -hmm. um, and time and time again, we've had people say, thank you, number one, and and many times say, that's the first time someone's taken the time yeah. to explain to me the dosage of, of what I'd be consuming first. And we frame it as safety first, guys. Like, you're going to be having seven shots with us today, roughly one ounce a piece. Collectively, you'll be consuming just under three milligrams of THC, under seven milligrams of CBD, and then a blend of proprietary cannabis terpenes. Very safe, sessionable dosage, right? And just by setting that parameter, it, yeah. it creates safety for the rest of the experience, right? And so really so much of this has just come out of the deep work that Tony does on the front lines, working with people, checking, um, understanding what they're looking for. Our jobs at the end of the day, if we're doing our jobs right in consumer packaged goods, in fashion, in anything that actually touches an end consumer is to give people what they never knew they always wanted. 
which means you have to be open <laughs> to what they both are and are not telling you, right? And that and that's what we try to do. So I wish we could take more credit. I mean, I, Tony can take some credit because he does the heavy lifting. Yeah. Um, but but Tony, how do you Tony, how do you do it, right? Because we have been talking about so a couple of things. Let me just kind of put the context here. So we're talking about how we are um, seasoning, okay? Yeah. We are talking about how you are new to cannabis. And so you yeah. all have products that are amazing products that are elevated, are strain specific, you know, um, amazing, you know, effective dosing, um, clean, you know, throughout uh, in terms of the experience, balanced experiences. Um, and we're talking about how you have a history of being able to reach um, markets that have not been touched, whether they're younger, whether they are, you know, new consumers. So, I mean, without giving up your secret sauce, but like, how do you do it? And it, and, and let me just say this. I'm sure it's not just the 250 people yeah. who are, you know, who are giving, you know, thoughts and feedback. <laughs> So, I mean, what are you prioritizing here? Like, how do you tackle this? Because this is a lot. Yeah, I, I think for, for the first most, it's more about bringing in something that cannabis industry hasn't seen. Like our background in hospitality and fashion, like you can see in our marketing, it's very creating a whole entire lifestyle. And yeah. people, want, people are engaged in that and people want to be there. So we are creating these experiences and events that people really want, like we want them to have FOMO. Like they're like, what yes. is Ms. I doing? do, I have FOMO. I wanna, <laughs> yes, I wanna be there. What are they up to? We want to have that, that mainstream control of what like Pepsi is doing or, you know, Red Bull. Like we wanna be that in, in cannabis. Yeah. Um, so really kind of taking notes from, you know, myself and Nate who are kind of, um, kind of curious and we are you know we want to do that so really taking our own kind of knowledge that we know in the industry now and kind of applying that to our product so who we're targeting I'm gonna throw it to I'm gonna throw it to a couple of images that you all shared yep. um because I want to make sure that the people first of all let me say this if y'all are not following these amazing folks um, to keep tabs on all the good things they're doing, IG, LinkedIn, love Mason Bloom, Mason Bloom. Please follow. Um, you need to do that, right? Because the shit is fire. Let me just say that first of all, okay? <laughs> Second of all, um, I want to just um, share a couple of the images. Like, so one, we can kind of see it behind Jake, but I'm going to take us off screen for a minute so that I can give the full screen picture of some of this stuff. And of course, once you like and subscribe and do all that stuff and follow them, then you can see more. Uh, but I want you all to get a sense of just the care and the detail, the level of detail um, that even goes into some of the pieces for their marketing. Um, so give me one minute. I'm going to take us off screen. So yeah, so this is like, this is the kind of brunch, this is the kind of situation I want. This is like old Hollywood. This is yep. like, it's old Hollywood with a new flair with, you know, all the drama and I'm fucking here for it. So we are, about. we are drama. We, we will bring the drama everywhere we go. No, it's like really just targeting those people in the events that they're, they want to be at the experiences that we are very creative of, you know, and then like bringing our fashion sense into it all. And then our hospitality background and then running it off with like wellness. Like how do we speak about wellness um, in general? Well, and Frederica, I mean, you know, a real testament to Tony's hard work. He, you know, he works tirelessly in looking at trends outside of our industry mm -hmm. and our, you know, our backgrounds and our connections in fashion have have set us up in a scenario where we're constantly chasing seasons right yeah. Yeah. um but we also both from our worlds of fashion and our world of hospitality have worked 
for a very long time in in a space of what we would call non-essential goods, right? Mm -hmm. Like everything that we have done, everything that we've made really for the last 15 years has been stuff that you aspire for, right? right? We are not making just peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and giving you water, right? Those are essentials. Those are things you need to live off of, right? right. We're not just giving you dungarees and a basic t-shirt in hopes that you have clothing and shoes on your feet, right? right. Um, we do the This extra. is desire. This yeah. is desire. Yes. We do extra. Yeah. We do extra. <laughs> really well um, you know we we like to joke that we are the show and we think that you know for any consumer that's the real opportunity right to elevate their every day to create these great moments and so yeah these are aspirational moments that tony captures vignettes um, that transport you because we want you to actually transport yourself i mean we have a role in that but the, the goal is that you see the moment, you, you decide you like the product, and that together you create your own journey, right? Yeah. Um, and that that journey can be with people um, because sometimes it's better with friends, right? Mm -hmm. That journey can be by yourself because total mental health and self-care is something we all need to prioritize, right? I'm seeing a bubble bath. Like I'm seeing a oh. bubble bath. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. with, mm -hmm. a, with a nice chilled glass. Mm -hmm. Okay. 100, yep. One hundred percent. I'm there. I'm there. That's yeah. what I'm seeing. I mean, I'm like, seeing. I prefer the passion wild honeysuckle for more of the the bubble bath moments, mm -hmm. and then I like my our our current seasonal, the lemon cucumber and sweet basil is like an awesome afternoon refresher. And then, you know, strawberry Provencal and lemongrass is just like a perfect summer um, cooler, like when it's hot Every outside, day. which yes. thanks to right now in San Francisco, it's just a little hot outside. So like, and it's just that beginning of summer. So again, these are, these are different moments we chase. Okay. So real quick, selfishly, this is my, this is my plug. Okay. Because I uh, love how the website has like recipes, um, you know, to give a little direction there. But I feel like what we just kind of described these vibes and how you, you know, how Jake, you shared like, oh, I like this one for more bath. And this one is more of an mm -hmm. afternoon spritzer, like leaving the office early, right? Like say, you know, for those summer hours where you have people getting out at two o'clock and three o'clock in the time to head to a happy hour or in time to, you know, meet something, some, <clears throat> excuse me, meet someone afterwards. Like we need some of these vignettes, right? Like we need some short videos. Okay, guys, we need some short okay. videos in terms of how the drinks pair with experiences. Frederica, is this just because you want to see how Tony bubble baths? Absolutely. <laughs> like, <laughs> because, because let's be clear, that's going to be a next level bubble bath. Like, listen, listen, you say y'all do mm -hmm. drama, right? So I want to so see this bathroom set up. Okay. Because again, what you all do is drama and you do desire right there will be candles yes. there will be I need, a I need a chandelier i need candles i need first of all i want a claw tub okay let me yes. just put that there. i want a claw tub i don't want no regular shit. i want a claw tub okay <laughs> i need some greenery i need some plants yeah. in there it's very important mm -hmm, okay mm -hmm. um i need some candles maybe even a chandelier if you will um let's talk about the uh let's talk about the music let's talk about the background instrumental i don't want words i just want instrumental okay yes, yes. i'm very I mean, particular as well it's it very clearly I hear. here i oh, hear it. Like... Uh, oh look i'm gonna set a vibe i'm gonna set a vibe boo. okay i got I, else. I got your vibe i got your vibe <laughs> like, so, Go ahead. No, I was just going to say we're, we're onto something here. Like, I mean, this, that's a relax. That is the most relaxing bath. Well, also being the most stylish, which begs the question, why do, why do more bathrooms not have chandeliers over the bathtub? Like, like they want you to hurry up and get in and get out when yeah. like this should be a place where you can relax, you're exfoliating, you're soaking, you're, 
You know, I mean, like this is this is literally like an afternoon kind of thing here or an evening thing here. I, yep. I, I mean, I would agree. <laughs> but also, I mean, I feel like baths could happen any time of the day, just for you the know what? Whenever like, you want. Yeah. yeah like, I mean, I, I'll, I'll be honest. I've taken a bath in the morning because it's been a hard morning. Like, I have been like, you know what? <laughs> it's 10 a.m. I'm checking out now. <laughs> morning baths are delicious. I will say that. A morning bath, especially when you have the time to waste, and it's not like you're on the clock, those are delicious. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Total mental health. We got to take care of ourselves. That's it. So let's jump into this. Okay. Cause I can get all in y'all business and we could keep going on with our vibe. I want to talk about the products because you all are launching. Yes, we are. I'm, um, we're very excited to be bringing product to market here in California in, uh, the third quarter. Um, so we're looking at, uh, summer. This is our endless summer of Maison Bloom. Um, so we'll be coming in uh, hot on the second half of summer um, with our elevated seltzers, um, which are our three standard flavors and then a special seasonal. Um, and then the seasonal will rotate out following the fashion calendar. So very quickly hot on the heels of our first release um, will be shifting very shortly into fall. And so you'll see that uh, lemon, cucumber and sweet basil uh, switch over to our our newer release, which I will not name yet. Um, mm. Things to things to to keep your eyes and ears peeled for. Mm -hmm. Okay, <laughs> okay. And look, I'm a fall baby, so I'm all about the fall. You like the, you like the sweater weather. I, I see do. how you play. I do. I like a good layer. I like a good layer. Listen, fall is everyone's best season. Let's yeah. be fair. Yeah. And I the colors. Fall. What'd you say, Tony? I said, I love fall. I like to be cozy. Yeah. You know, snuggle up by the fire. Or like, yeah. See, now that, see, <laughs> that's, that's another, that's another vignette. That's another yeah. little short video of like, if someone was snuggling by the fire, if someone was, um, you know, going up in the mountains for like, to like a ski resort. Yeah. What would, what would they want? What would their order for Maison Bloom look like? Well, I mean, first of all, it is Opera Maison Bloom. Like, I mean, that's just a thing, right? After skiing, you're going to have your Maison Bloom. Uh -huh. um, Tony, what would be your go-to flavor? Well, I always, I mean, strawberry Provencal and lemongrass is always something that is neutral and you can have that all year round. Okay. Um, but something about that is because, you know, if you have some strawberries on the side with a fire and that, so it would be an amazing partner. Tony trying to, Tony trying to get people pregnant. Um, <laughs> I mean, you know, listen, Tony's ain't, ain't never going to stop trying there. <laughs> so, yeah. Tony, <laughs> I mean, this is oh Tony. Tony is basically like Barry White's music, just like like as a human on loop and repeat all the time. All the time. Like, all the time. Listen, listen, okay, because I was going straight to Teddy P. I was going like, <laughs> come on and go with me. Come on and yeah, go no, with Tony, me. Tony takes it back and slows it down for you. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. That's, I love that's it. My I love vibe. It. You said what, baby? That's my vibe. That's your vibe. Okay. Yeah. Well, Tony, you and I can vibe off of that because I am all about like old school soul, um, R and B. Like I'll definitely turn up, but but you know, a good two step is my vibe. Okay. A good two step is my vibe. Okay. So what are y'all most excited about with this launch? And I know with it being Pride Month, I'm sure you're doing installations. You know, I'm sure that y'all are like, you know, priming the pump, setting the scene, getting the people ready. So, I mean, what is most exciting about um, finally getting to this point where it's like, hey, our, our, our products are going to be released. They're going to be for, you know, major um, uh, consumption or availability. What is so exciting about it for you? 
Tony, you want to go first? Well, yeah. I mean, we've been talking and about our product and people have already gone through some of the journeys with us. And it's going to be amazing to really have really all of California to really experience that with us. So that is something that I'm looking forward to. Um, I we We always touch our consumer the way we are like family, like one-on-one, -on -one. like we always have that hospitality in the back of our mind. We want you to feel like you are part of Maison Bloom. So when you are tasting a product, you know that we're there with you, you know, having that education with you. So that's what I'm really most um, excited about is actually having everyone experience that. Yeah, yeah, experience and the love. Experience the love. Experience the love. And if I may add to that, Frederica, I would just share that, you know, everything that Tony said is absolutely true and, and something I feel and excites me as well. I would layer in, this has been such a collaborative journey. Um, you know, when we started out two years ago and explained to our partners at Vertosa what we wanted to accomplish as cannabis is, you know, first true strain specific whole beverage, single barrel approach. The team at Vertosa was like, yes, we love this. This is everything. We're so on board for this. Also too, it's not possible. <laughs> um, and together we've worked hard to evolve, um, to push each other. And in that, Sonoma Hill, the team from Sonoma Hills Farm uh, came to the table and said, wait a minute, like, we think we, we can really help make this happen. We've got a, a, an amazing offering from our, our fully sustainable ecosystem that is, you know, OCAL certified, sun and earth certified, exceptional plant DNA that is grown with a real understanding of the terroir. You know, Aaron Kiefer has brought all of his magic from Thomas Keller Group and the French Laundry over to the way that he's curating the strains and creating what is the Sonoma Hills Farm flower. Um, and so the evolution that had to take place between all three of us to yeah. push what was possible forward um, in cannabis beverage and to know that it's taken us two years to push each other and, you know, and to run alongside each other to bring this, that it wasn't just us saying, you know what, we're going to do this now. We're going to make something that's strain specific and all plant because we like these words. Um, it was something where we had to push each other, push the science, um, push the application of said science and the integration and the formulation of the beverage uh, itself and how we make to create yeah. this. We needed a grower and, and, and a vision and for understanding the plant integrity and the great genetics, all of that stuff, all of that, those pieces of nerd, as I like to say, um, had to come together. And so for me, it's really exciting. Yes, all of the consumer facing stuff, because we know the consumer is thirsty for what we're creating, right? But it's also a real testament to how this industry does work when it works in its most beautiful way that we lift as we climb together. And so for me personally, the per the one who works so hard on, on the innovation side of things, I know that I am going to take great pride in seeing the light shine on Sonoma Hills Farms and the light shine on Vertosa for their hard work because we wouldn't be able to do what we're doing without them, right? And, and so it, it's a really, it's a really fantastic moment as any launch should be for anyone. Um, but I, I specifically have to call that out because I think, you know, we talk a lot about the, the perils of the cannabis industry and how hard it is. We've spoken earlier today about how great team is and the importance of those dynamics, but it's also so important to have great friends, great collaborators. And, and we find this industry to be one of the best in that. It's something that we think is so beautiful about cannabis is that this is an industry where people want to team up. They want to work together. We want to do cool shit. Um, and we want to do right by the flower in that. And so when you're doing both of those things, it's amazing how much more you can do, how much faster you can run together. Two years still feels a little long. Wish that could have taken less time. Um, you know, but but, but it was you know, also two years in the midst of a pandemic that I'm sure 
you know, impacted uh, you all being able to to move more quickly through it. Um, and you know what? Also, <clears throat> we started off talking about how timing is everything. And so I would like to think that this is y'all time, that it took two years because you needed two years. Um, and this is the time that, you know, the people are ready. Tony was like, Jake, you got to exfoliate. <laughs> You gotta fix your hair, like you know, there was a long list. List. yeah, there was a long list of things <laughs> we had to get ready for. <laughs> Where Tony was just ready the whole time, just there, just you stay ready, you just stay ready. <laughs> Tony out here glistening. So look, <laughs> um, because first of all, let me say this: we love Vertosa. Hey, Austin, love Austin Stevenson. Uh, but we love the whole company of Vertosa. We love the amazing work that they um, that they do and, and how they always have that attitude of like, well, let's figure it out, right? Mm -hmm. You know, um, the people's ecosystem, you know, smoke this, you know, our drips. Like we've done work with Vertosa. Um, Chef Charlene, you know, uh, is in the midst of product development with Vertosa. So uh, in terms of the ecosystem that you speak of, like, absolutely. Like, you know, good people connect with good people. And so um, so we absolutely love them. I want to touch on something, though, that you said, um, because, you know, this is the Maison difference. This is the Maison Bloom difference in terms of this being strain specific, in terms of um, being full plant. And so just in, for educational purposes, why are those things so important? Because I think that Consumers need to know this, that when they are choosing, it's not just whatever is on the shelf, but it's important to understand why this one, and not throwing shade, but just talking about how we're different, why you're different, and why those things that, you know, those terms that you throw out, um, that you've been throwing out, why those are so important. Well, the best way I can answer the strain specificity or the way I like to answer it is mm -hmm. that, you know, think of strain specificity in cannabis beverage the same way that one can think of juniper in gin. In gin. Ooh! Uh, now look, how you know me? Because I'm a gin lady. You ain't, did you know that? I got you, girl. I do research too. Like, <laughs> the library is open and I like to read. Okay. 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 <laughs> All right. uh, now, uh, now, think of you know, think of the way juniper and and other botanical ingredients are used to create different varietals of yeah. robust gin flavors. Right? You can have citrus forward. You can have herbaceous forward. You can now, have. Oh. Yep. Exactly. And so the strain. I want my flowers for y'all. Oh, I, I do like that you are blooming. Um. The strain specificity, first and foremost, offers value in terms of flavor um, as well as function. Um, and those elements of the euphoric effect that are based in those strains will carry through to a certain caliber as well. But it's really also the, the maturity of the plant itself and, and the great flavors that can come out of that, right? And when you smoke a plant, you're getting a very different experience of what those flavors are, right? Um, everything, when it's burned through, tastes a little different, right? Um, when you have those base botanical terpenes and those notes that give you the robustness of cherry or the robustness of sour diesel or candy, right? Those mm -hmm. things can come through differently when you remove the element of smoke or inhalation from it, right? Mm -hmm. When we treat it separately. And so there's a key aspect of noting the strain for its effect, noting it for its greater integrity and the profile that comes along with it. And so that has value. Mm -hmm. um, that has value in creating the best recipe. And then if you are more cannabis immersed, it has value in the same way that I would liken it to great wine consumers, right? Mm -hmm. Where they understand the value of terroir and how Napa Pinots are different than French Pinots than maybe different than Italian Pinots or Australian Pinots. Yeah. So there's value there. Because it's the soil. 100%. 100%. Yeah. 
Now, the whole plant is one of the things that I'm super passionate about as part of not only the value of, of cannabis, but also the integrity and our dedication to, to true sustainability and, and yeah. proper environmental practices. You know, by using utilizing the whole plant, we're using a lot of parts of cannabis of the cannabis plant itself that otherwise are treated as, you know, uh, just bio waste, right? That goes back in maybe to mulch, maybe to other elements that can be returned to the earth and brought into the cycle, but yeah. it's arguably unusable. But in our case, through nano emulsion process, it's very usable. And so by taking the whole plant approach, number one, we get beautiful THC, beautiful CBD from, from elements of the plant that otherwise aren't processed traditionally. Um, so great, let's just squeeze all the juice out of the berries, so to speak. Um, but on top of that, we green the cycle even more so, and we create tighter ecosystems that are more responsible um, and create a better product um, in terms of quality that also is made with more mindfulness. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's really important. That's important to our customers. At the end of the day, our customers want super clean beverages. Um, uh, they want them to taste great. They want a great effect out of them, right? And they want them to be made responsibly, yeah. right? They want to feel good. They want to feel like they're doing better in their consumption. Yeah. yeah 100%. And then the single barrel aspect of it is something that we really take best practice from the alcohol industry there. Um, and we want these, we, we wanted to create an experience where the flavors mature um, in the same way. Um, and, and deliver complexity in the same way that you're that you see more akin with either wine or uh, or spirit aging. And so the single yeah. barrel there comes into play to make sure that we're giving you robust, mature, complex flavors. And that's the really exciting thing is that we look at the cannabis plant and we look at the other ingredients and we bring them together in terms of their botanical profiles so they complement. Um, and oftentimes, you know, that strain specificity, it's giving us that beautiful THC and CBD, but it's also giving us valuable terpenes and valuable uh, plant genetic, uh, botanical genetic material that amplifies, for example, the strawberry or amplifies the lemongrass. And so the flavors are uh, juicier, fresher, more vibrant. Um, and that's why that's why we love the approach that we've we've built with our partners. Um, you know why we've been so dedicated to making this the path that we want to forge. Um, doesn't mean that we don't love our brothers, our sisters, and everything in between in terms of the beverage offering. We think that beverage is a beautiful space that is as dynamic as what you would see in any other retail space outside of cannabis. I mean, there's a store called Bevmo, not sure if you heard of it, and it's just <laughs> shelves and shelves of beverages pointing out that there truly is a wide space, a wide berth that can be taken from multiple options. We believe the same thing is true in cannabis, and Maison Bloom's mission is really specific in understanding that, that craft approach, yeah. the beverage in our space, similar to the craft cocktail movement in the AlkBev space. And we do that with the same dedication to sessionability, that same dedication to that understanding of time-honored traditions and how we enjoy beverage both individually and socially. Um, yeah. And we want to do that, again, responsibly. You drink responsibly. You should drink your cannabis responsibly as well. I mean, all things, all things be responsible in it, right? Yes. Um, so thank, yes, absolutely. Thank you so much for that breakdown because I think it's important. I think it's important. Um, one, when people are making, when consumers are making decisions on brands that they're going to support, it's important to to know, you know, how this product got here and the care and the intention with it. So I wanted to just kind of provide the space for you all to expound on that. Um, so. We have launch coming up third quarter um, leading up to it. Of course, there are installations. You all are ramping up. Um, everything is going to be amazing. It's going to be a bang. Are there any key dates for people who are in Cali um, in certain parts of the state? Are there key dates 
that people need to like put on their calendar? That's my first question. Well, Tony, um, I believe the only thing I'm allowed to say out loud is follow us on Instagram and subscribe mm -hmm. to the newsletter. Yeah. So that you get special invitations to invite only experiences leading up to launch. There are many things happening. We pop up, I believe the, the line you like me to use, Tony, is that we pop up when you least expect us, but you definitely want us. And you so make us. sure that you're on the list. Yep. So, so it's a all, summer of fun. A uh, summer it's a summer of fun. fun. Yep. Sign up for summer of fun, 100%. Uh, first of all, Tony, you have... Yeah. You have trained Jake well. <laughs> he trains me well too. It, it, it's it's the same. It's a mutual thing. It's a, it's mutual, a mutual thing. thing. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So in terms of marketing, right? Because I do follow you all, and so I do see the amazing um, the amazing visuals and images. Oh wait, I have one more idea. I have one more right. idea. Okay. Um. Because we were talking about when I think of when I think of spirits, I think of, you know, whether it's craft cocktails, craft beer, whatever, craft infused beverages. I'm also thinking of the communal sense of like meal sharing. So that's mm -hmm. another thing in terms of like, oh, this would pair well with that. And I know you all were in uh, the food industry. You were in, you know, that space. And so this would be easy peasy for y'all. So I'm just throwing that out there again. Yes. These are all of my selfish wants. Um, this is what I use the space for um, is to, is to, um, you know, closed mouths don't get fed. So it's to make yeah. the arguments for things that I want to see. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, well, as, well, you know, we do these, um, infused dinners. No, so. because I'm not in California, god damn it. I gotta come out. <laughs> Wait, where are you? We'll make it happen. Don't worry. I, I no. think Tony, you I think Tony, you need to make sure that Frederica is your guest to yes. the next farm to table dinner. Like Dumb. it's just it's just it's the way it is. Like it's you know, this is what happens. You end up talking with us, Frederica, and then you end up making dinner plans because Listen. I did not get this body by eating carrots, okay. Like, let's just be fair. <laughs> Food is love. Food is love. Food is love. <laughs> Food loves me long time, okay? Just so we're clear. It's like, look, and you know what I call it? I call it sexy extra. I'm just like, look, this is a part of the, this is a part of being seasoned, okay? Uh, I'm like, baby, you're gonna get all of this, you know? I you know, we it. keep it healthy, but you're gonna get all of this, okay? Tony's gonna start putting me on portion control now. He's like, <laughs> no, Jake, this is not the extra that you get. <laughs> this is not our extra. Put it down. <laughs> it's not our extra. Remember that this? But Tony, so Tony, what's going on? What? So, <laughs> Tony, like, what? What you mean? What's what? Happening? What's happening? <laughs> so, so what's next? Like, are there are there things that people can? I know we gotta we gotta sign on to the list. It's a summer of fun and things of that nature. But mm -hmm. is there anything that you can share with the people in terms of uh, what they should be on the lookout for? Well, we are. Let me see, what do I say? We are very good at experience, like creating experiences. Mm -hmm. So there's gonna be that gonna be out there, um, events. Um, we are putting everything down on the calendar right now as we speak. And there are some major events coming up. Like, I mean, we have like MJ Biz is gonna be, it's not in Cali, it's gonna be in Las Vegas, but there are some major things coming up. So I'm yep. just, I'm trying to get my calendar together in terms of, Hall of, Where Flowers. Hall, Hall of Flowers. Hall of Flowers is going to be probably the soonest will probably pop up. Okay. And that's going to be the one in Santa Rosa. Okay. For, for our California friends and then for our East Coast friends, um, you'll have the opportunity uh, to see us at the uh, Trailblazers New York uh, uh, July event opportunity. Okay. Okay. So there are those two that are more public facing. 
Yes. Um, we do, as we, we have mentioned our farm to table dinner series. Um, yeah. And these pop up in places near, uh, near you when you least expect them. So again, mm -hmm. being on the list matters. And then we will have a, uh, a, a launch experience in both Southern California and Northern California um, in August. Um, separate okay. of Hollow Flowers, separate of everything else. Just a truly a Maison Bloom experience. So mm -hmm. if you're looking to elevate whatever day of the week that this falls on, yeah. Um, I promise you a good time because Tony knows how to throw a party. Listen, I already believe it. So um, first of all, the first thing that people need to do, um, as Jake and Tony have shared, is you need to get on the list. You need to sign up for the newsletter so that you can be a part of the inside scoop on all of the amazing stuff that's going on, all the pop ups where you mm -hmm. want them to be, but you don't know that they're going to be there. So you need to get on that list. Second of all, second of all, third quarter is going to be amazing. So all the Cali folks, um, please be on the lookout for Maison Bloom to be in all of your favorite locations. And if you don't see it, then you should be asking people, where is that? Mm -hmm. Because that's how we hold, uh, this is how we hold retail accountable. We have to ask for the things that we want. And last but not least, parting words from you gentlemen. Tony, take you go. It away. You go. Uh, well, in, you know, in honor of, of the month that it is, um, it's a pleasure to be in, in great company. It's a pleasure to spend time with the people's ecosystem. Uh, you know, a, a truly dedicated player to creating plurality, um, to creating um, the opportunity for every unique voice um, to be authentically itself and have a seat at the round table, because the reality is that we get so much further by having more round tables than we do executive tables. And so, um, you know, in honor of the month and the space that that we're gifted here, um, for those who fought a hell of a lot harder than we probably ever will need to, but still, we've got a fight in front of us as well. Um, you know. I, I want to say it's it's just a pleasure to be in your company today, Frederica, and it's a pleasure to yes. be in the people's ecosystem um, orbit to run alongside you guys. Um, we love you guys. We we really do. We uh, and we're so proud of seeing you guys evolve as well. Um, you know, and so my closing words are: remember that the path is hard. Um, the journey is long, but everything is better with friends. Um, I've got a pretty good friend, a couple of them that I get to work with every day. I got some extra friends like Frederica here who I get to talk to in situations like this. Find your friends um, and, and show up for them as much as you possibly can because we'll get there together, I promise. Absolutely. Yeah, and for me, it's just really just acknowledging and recognizing the accomplishments of the gay rights movement and the brave of the LGBTQI advocates. Um, it's about the people in the LGBTQ community and allies who fight and continue to fight for equality. I don't have anything to say. Uh, <laughs> Jake and Tony took it. Listen, um, be blunt in your convictions. I'll say that. Be blunt in your convictions. Um, until next time, everyone, like, subscribe, do all of that good shit. Y'all know that we are everywhere, and um, stay blunted. Some props for Frederica. Yeah. yeah.